so I developed this uh, this software called that I just called actually the customer came up with this name. I gave it a different name, but they ended up calling it the mainframe connector. So I went along with that. I'm gonna code this here. Um, so what this is was uh, I, I was totally new to the mainframe environment and I start off not you know not even knowing what what a batch job was what a what was JCL how do how do I even launch a program in the environment and working closely with with the customers uh, on several several engagements um, we eventually came up with a solution for for how they could how we could give them an interface that their uh, their job operators could interact and provide commands that were similar to what was documented on the normal uh, Google Cloud command line tools. Uh, figuring out authentication on the mainframe was even just basic things initially where we had to, it, it was um, a learning experience figuring out how to do it. Um, so I'm gonna go here. So the main thing that that this is offering was a JCL interface that it's providing mostly the same features or some of the, the core features of GS, these GSUtil and the BQ command line tools. Um, these tools originally they're implemented in Python. So since on the mainframe we only have access really to the to Java or the the JVM, uh, we don't. There is no access to Python, so we couldn't get these original tools to work. The way that the file system works is much different, so we we had to we had to adjust how it works, anyways. Um, and the goal of this product is is really to be able to upload data sets pretty easily. Like you just have to provide a copy book along with it. And then also once that's once that's copied over and converted into a file format that BigQuery can load, it it also gives you a mechanism to launch BigQuery jobs. Like let's say you have a a data set that you've exported from DB2, uh, you run a command using this tool to upload it, and it looking at your copy book, it's it gets the schema from there and converts it to uh, an ORC file. Then you submit some SQL, a series of SQL statements that's going to then transform it or merge it into your other tables that that you that you're going to expose to your end users. Um, so these are the, the decoding took. This was another thing that initially figuring out how to do the decoding was was a little bit tricky, but we were able to overcome it and even. For me, these formats, the binary and packed decimal formats, were it was new to me working with these. Um, we do that decoding before converting files over to ORC. So we have this, uh, what we see several customers that, that have uh, mainframe doing, to get data into BigQuery was first, they would have some kind of NFS or FTP or something where they get first get the data off onto a Linux server. And then from there, there's some kind of other job scheduling system to get it into to BigQuery. And this is this is fine, it works because there's plenty of people that they'll have a team that's familiar with loading data. Once it gets onto a Linux server, then it's um it's using tools where there's there's more people in the organization that are familiar with it. Um, but what we're trying to do is try to, to get this to go faster because sometimes there's several steps here and each one adds some time, some latency for that that data landing uh, to get into to BigQuery. So it could be if it's and if it's especially if it's large files, it could be you know. 30 minutes to hours that it's 
of time waiting for this to work its way through the process. So we, the goal of this tool is to kind of be able to run a job directly from the mainframe and just send it straight, send the data straight into cloud storage without really having intermediate places where the data has to land. Uh, so this is just to kind of give an idea of what it looks like to use the tool. So for people that are familiar with JCL, um, or for people that aren't familiar, I'll just give a really brief over. So the jobs are split into steps and there's data, DD statements that, that have the, uh, like an input file. Um, and so what we do is we have this, what's the in-stream data set. So you can, you can provide this as a separate file, but you can also have it in line where you have a command um, that's specified. And I, the details of the command are left out, but you can see that it looks just like a shell command. It's, there's not actually a, a shell, but I have this, we created this proc called BQSH, which is supposed to, to be like a shell emulator that makes it look like you're just running the same commands that you're familiar with, like GSU to CP. And the arguments here, you'll give the, the DSN of the, you know, the data set that you're going to read. Uh, you might also have arguments that give, give a DSN for your copy book. Um, if you've got, you know, stats tables or other, other things related to job, those, you could just provide them just like any other command line argument in, in this text format. Uh, this, this also lets us use kind of, uh, normal, um, command line parsing library. So once it, once it gets past this shell emulator class, then it looks like a normal uh, Java application to us for the for the people that are working on the code. Um, so underneath that, there's this is the contents, like uh, abbreviated contents of, of the proc. So we've got a key file where somebody has uploaded just your JSON key file for a service account. Um, this can also be provided in the um, through an environment variable. So if you have an environment variable here, uh, the key file might be on the Unix file system, but it also it also works if it's if it's a MVS data set. Um, this. So this one is a more complete example. So we've got our, right, we've got our in file with pointing to the data, a copy book that says, you know, what's the schema of this data? And then we're saying, where do we want to put this? And it's going to be a ORC file. Right? And then, so that's, after that's done, then you'll have your data set is going to be in cloud storage. You'll be able to read that from BigQuery or from Hadoop or whatever. Uh, any system that supports the ORC format. Uh, so then after that, you could either load it as a table. So you write, you're just pointing to the file that you just uploaded or your, you can, and then once it's loaded as a table, you can then provide a data set that has a, a SQL query inside. And then you're just giving some some arguments that look just like you would be you know, if you're you running this from Linux. Looks the arguments are identical. Um, and so that's that's pretty much it. It's, there was a lot of work to to kind of get this interface working, but once um, once that's there, then it's it's pretty straightforward to use this. The, I think getting it, getting the initial install, like figuring out where you want to put your proc, um, if you have parameterization or just um, variables that you need to replace, uh, something that makes this e easy to use is that if you have several, like you might have several steps, and our shell 
interpreter, it, it supports environment variables. So in this proc area, where you can set environment variables, all those will be available inside these commands. So if you put an environment variable here, like let's say you've got 100 steps with the same bucket, you'll be able to replace this with an environment variable that was set uh, common to all the jobs, and it'll just, uh, you can replace that, which helps a lot when the limit is 80 characters. Um, okay. Hey, Jason. Yeah. Jason, you know, as we're trying to summarize this, are there any general takeaways? Because, you know, there's a lot of valuable detail. I'm just trying to stay a little higher level, and maybe you could leave people with some sure. general recommendations. I know that every situation is different, but is the gist of it that, look, Google's got a wealth of skills, we've got resources, there's not an exact solution that you could just take off the shelf, but are there maybe two or three common takeaways so people aren't necessarily scared about trying to integrate a mainframe or a legacy app with the cloud? Oh yeah, so I, I guess the that's uh, the takeaway is that you know there we have some experience with it. Um, there's there's other things that you know each time depending on what the source system is it, it you know it probably will be it probably will be something new uh recently somebody asked me about um connecting to pub sub and right now they have ibm mq working uh but they want to figure out how to how to swap that out for pub sub so it's kind of a process of looking at you know what's what's working right now um whether you know what it, what language is the source system in uh what's what's the cloud service that you want to use are you know there's there's a challenge in that there's not uh a supported sdk for a lot of the languages that are on the mainframe like there's not a cobol sdk that there's there's a c++ sdk but it doesn't it's not provided in a way that will compile on ZOS out of the box. So maybe then, Jason, is the yeah. key takeaway from this, and we appreciate your time, is the key takeaway here that, look, we know mainframes can be overwhelming or a little scary, but you can absolutely start migrating some of those applications to the cloud, and you can absolutely start integrating those applications with the cloud for greater redundancy and flexibility, and not to think that it's simply impossible that you have to continue to run it on-prem. There are ways that Google, even if it's not completely cookie cutter or far from it, to help you gradually start that migration. It's not, you know, it's not simply a question of, okay, I just moved all my email to G Suite. That's pretty straightforward. It's more yeah, complicated. So it's so it's it's definitely possible. Um and so I think you're you're it you'll probably want to have your you know your networking and security set up first. Usually that you need that your kind of the cloud infrastructure team to be set up and, and uh usually you'll have the your interconnect set up so that you can get good throughput from your your mainframe like the networking from your mainframe into cloud storage um via your private network that like that's kind of the prerequisite to this uh one of the solutions that i want to highlight is so a lot of the a lot of the the um the enablement for moving mainframe is going to be through uh through technology partners so we have a couple different partners um so there's one we have a uh, channel stream appliance by Alebra, which they actually offer a hardware appliance and this is going to be similar they're going to have a similar interface to what i just showed with the mainframe connector mm -hmm. um but it's going to be it's going to support a a much larger amount of data uh, just by the nature of the, the fiber channel connection. Um, so the data leaves the mainframe via fiber channel. And then 
they have a Linux appliance that's uh, that's communicating over TCP/IP then to over the over your interconnect into Google's network to write the data to cloud storage. So this is going to look like a channel program. Um, so that's that's one. Uh, we have other partners that are doing translation of specific languages. So we have one that's um, one that's specialized in converting assembler to COBOL, uh, and then we use our our own uh, our own G4 software to convert the COBOL into um, into Java. Uh, we have another one where if you've got a uh, an an I series mainframe, we've got a a partner that's specialized in in running, you know, recompiling your your I series applications and running like kind of providing a a virtualized version of that uh, that platform on Google Cloud. Mm 